In one word, I would call her bubbly. Hannah's always happy. No matter what's going on, Hannah's happy. I would describe her as a energetic, and I have to add, I, I feel she's just a beautiful soul. I would say she's my best friend. You know, things kind of unfolded uh, the last week of August in 2016. She was losing weight. She wasn't eating a whole lot. She was complaining of some joint pain. We were keeping an eye on her. We were concerned about how she was feeling. We thought maybe it was just a flu or something that was going around. There was a few bloody noses. Um, by the mid-August, she developed a large lump on the side of her nose. This just isn't Hannah. Hannah's such a happy-go-lucky warm, bubbly, cartwheeling kind of kid, and all of a sudden she was lethargic and laying on the couch for a couple of days. And um, most of it was chalked up to growing pains. You know, Tammy really on Wednesday said, something's wrong, this is not Hannah, can you get her into the, to the doctors? And by the end of that day, we were at the hospital. And I still remember coming off the elevator, coming around the corner and looking at the sign, pediatric oncology. And Tammy took a post-it note and she wrote on it, they're talking about IWK and she passed it to me and I read that and my heart sank. And uh, that's when things started to get serious and I started to get concerned. I sat down and Tammy stood beside me and the doctor looked at us and said, well, I'm 95% sure your daughter's got leukemia. And uh, I don't know that anybody's ever ready to hear those words. Um, that was the hardest thing I've ever heard in my life, and I was devastated. I was hysterical, and uh, I was scared. And all I could think of is that, oh my God, are we gonna lose our little girl? Ah, <sighs> well, um, the word cancer, of course, is, um, you know, you associate that with, with dying. Um, so when you hear the words cancer uh, and your nine-year-old daughter, um, it was the worst feeling that a parent could ever experience. Especially when your nine-year-old daughter is, um, you know, she's just so tiny. I'm Hannah Gallant and I am 13, almost 14, and I really enjoy playing hockey and I enjoy art and hanging out with all my friends. That's it. <laughs> it's like 90% to 95% for like survival rate, but I remember still being scared, like what if I'm the unlucky one, the odd one that's going to get in the negative spot. So there's always that bit of fear, but I tried to keep positive and I looked on the better outcome. The doctor told us that, uh, and she said it so casually, she said, we can, we can cure this. I was a nine year old girl going into fourth grade with a bald head and all my friends were like really shocked of it. So my brothers and my dad shaved their head for me and I remember just feeling very happy about it and very, not so alone, and seeing that my family really cared about me. I thought that was like the least I could do, was do it with her. If she felt that it didn't look normal or something, at least we all did it too. No child should have to go through that alone and uh, feel out of place for something they can't help, so I figured I'd do all I could to uh, make her feel like she fit in. At the IWK, they have a bell that symbolizes you're gonna ring it when you are finished treatment and you're back to being healthy. And the bell's always this like big thing that was like, okay, it's in the future, I get to ring this eventually. But it never really realized it was gonna actually happen that I was gonna ring that bell one day. Walking up to the bell, it was like that big thing that I've been looking forward to, like my whole journey. It was right there in front of me and I was ready to ring it and that was a symbolize of when I was done treatment. I was really excited. I could feel myself like jumping a little. You know, to put a more, put it in perspective, 
There are other kids that we have met along this journey who haven't been as lucky as Hannah and we've lost. And there are other forms of cancer out there that are not curable and they, they need the funding to find cures or at least a prognosis that is 90 to 95 percent like it was for Hannah. And that's what the ultimate goal is. We don't want other people to have to go through what we went through and even worse, you know, go through losing a child to cancer. One of the toughest conversations I had was with, with a doctor and the doctor told me something that to, to this day I still recall. He said, Corey, we'd be having a much different conversation if this was 20 years ago. And it was at that point that I realized, oh my goodness, you know, and how far we've come with research and all of the doctors and all the scientists and all the wonderful work that they do. You know, how lucky we are to be able to enjoy our success in this terrible, terrible battle. But we're so blessed today that uh, thanks to all the, all of the work and all the money that's been donated, all the research that's been done, you know, we today have our little girl with us because of all that. And we're so thankful for that.